Hey guys, Damien, dermatologist. So you'd like to know more about infrared sources and how it affects melasma. This is an important video because if your melasma is not improving and you're using everything out there in the correct order, the correct concentration, and you're using the energy devices, chemical peels, tablets, etc., and your melasma is still not improving, certainly I, my team and I do look for hidden aspects of which um, there are potential flare-up factors for your melasma, which we or you may miss. And one of the most important is infrared sources. When you look at the action spectrum of melasma, in other words, what wavelengths of light make melasma worse, it's very complex because melasma itself can get worse with UVB. Easy, because that's sunscreen, right? Sunscreen blocks, if you have a high factor SPF, that's the easiest wavelength to block. UVA is a little bit harder. Longer wave UVA is a lot harder still. HEV or high energy visible light in the blue light spectrum, which is super important in all races, not just ethnic skin type, but in all races when it comes to melasma, has got to be considered. That's harder to block. One of the hardest is right at the end, which is your IR. And this is significant in some patients. So let's get straight into it. When you talk about other wavelengths, you've got to get that right first, right? You've got to understand how to block UVB, UVA, long wave UVA, HEV before considering IR. Because if you don't have this part blocked, you will never get this right, never, ever. This part is hard. Because when I talk to melasma patients, realistically only five to 10% of melasma patients are blocking this spectrum well, right? Because they don't understand the use of sunscreen and how, how sensitive your skin is to light. Here's the analogy. What I tell patients is this. If you're really, really good for 30 days of the month, let's say it has 31 days, right? A month or even like 30 days. If you're really good for 28, 29, 30 days, that one day which you screw up will compensate for that entire month. It's as simple as that because with melasma, even the smallest amount of light that gets through, that one day, that one hour, which you're not further protecting, that can undo your entire month. So before you concentrate on IR, which is important if you're doing everything right here, you got to understand this bit before trying to attenuate this bit here. So how do we stop this bit? UVB, like I said, is super easy, right? That's a burning spectrum. Now, the downside about um, UVB is that the majority of people just aren't using correct sunscreens. When I mean correct sunscreens, um, I mean correct sunscreens when it comes to blocking the UVB, UVA, invisible light. UVB, super easy. Any sunscreen will do it. That's a fact that there's an SPF factor. Now, an SPF factor is measured by application of two milligrams per centimeter squared, right? Which equates to between three to five mils per application um, for your face and neck, right? So as a dermatologist, let's say we'd be practical. You're using half a teaspoon, 2.5 to three mils. If you use three mils twice a day, that's six mils. When you look at a tube of sunscreen, a normal size tube, that's 50 mils. So realistically, when I ask patients, how much sunscreen are they using? Less than 5% of them will say, I go through a bottle in less than two weeks. The majority will say between two to four weeks. Uh, and the minority will say between three to six months. That's if they do have an understanding of the proper use of sunscreens. So you got to get that right first. Once you get the frequency and the amount of application then you concentrate about what's in the sunscreens. Don't be too fussed with that. Because if you use a tinted sunscreen, it's usually high in iron oxides. And it's the iron oxide which gives you the biggest attenuation of your blue light spectrum. So we talked about UVB. UVA, you can have chemical sunscreens. La Roche-Posay makes a really good one that can protect against the long wave UVA one. When it comes to physical sunscreens, your titanium is a dioxin and zinc oxide. Unless they are pigmentary grade, you're not going to get that attenuation for your longer wavelengths UVA, and certainly you won't get that attenuation for your uh, visible light. So from a practical point of view, I like using hybrid sunscreens, which, ones which contain physical blockers, your titanium zinc oxide, your chemical blockers, usually from LRP, and then your tinting, because your tinting is the one that's going to attenuate your uh, visible light. Now, when you can actually do that well, you can add an extra layer 
of blue light um, photoprotection, and that's to use mineral makeup because mineral makeup is very high in iron oxides. So when you look at the iron oxide concentration, it's usually between 2 to 3, 3.3%. That's going to give you about 92% attenuation, in other words, blockage of your visible light. So you've got to get that right. Now, it's taken me five minutes to get to this. What about IR? So what about the heat sources of IR? Super common in ethnics, right? And I'm not going to be stereotypical here, um, but I'm telling you, ethnic skin patients, generally speaking, the women, uh, we all know this, they cook very, very well. So they spend hours in the kitchen. Um, and usually when you look at ethnic skin, especially when it comes to Eastern um, in Mediterranean and Middle Eastern Indian, they usually like to use an open fire. My mum certainly liked using an open fire. The food tastes better, right? We know that. The problem being is the IR sources are huge because you get radiation from infrared. Certainly you get IR radiation from, um, from the sunlight, right? But if you're not out in the sunlight, directly in the sunlight, it's not too much of an issue. But even if you're indoors, that IR from cooking is significant because you can block all the other wavelengths here. But if you leave this alone, that's your action spectrum which flares up your melasma. So generally speaking, for these patients, it's super hard. When I see chefs, when I see cooks, when I see housewives, when I see people who love to do Bikram yoga and love to be in the sauna, when they have a lot of infrared, these are super hard. So what do I do? Sunscreens don't protect against this. Certainly when you look at the literature, there's stuff out there like your polypodium extracts, which might act as an antioxidant and hence decrease the amount of um, radiation from blue light, but also IR. But in the scheme of things, they do not polypodium itself, especially like things like helocare and fern block within the sunscreen, it only attenuates a small amount. And these are not ubiquitously tested. So it's still out there when it comes to the evidence. And hence, your IR side of things still remain um, not blocked. So with these patients, I usually advise a face shield, like a welder shield. I know you look silly with it, but there are welder shields out there where there's face shields out there that block against IR infrared. They also attenuate things like your um, UVB, UVA, your HEV, and your IR. So these shields can be bought online. I don't have a favorite brand, um, and they do cost about $100 to $120, but they last a long time. So that's the only way you're going to block IR, especially if you're a cook. Guys, I hope you liked that video. I hope you understand you really understand the importance of sunscreen, how to get this side of your spectrum done first before moving on to your IR side of things. Stay safe.